Welcome back, Chargers. This is Coach Oliver once again for our new episode of the Memorable Games of 2021. And in this episode, we will be discussing the game played in the 50th UAE National Day Rapid Chess Championship. And this game was against Grandmaster Viorel Yordachesco from Moldova. He's one of the top Grandmasters from Moldova with a peak rating of 2651. And also, he's not just a strong player, but he's also a very good coach. He has produced some prodigies in the UAE, most especially Roda al Khal from Abu Dhabi, who won the World Schools Chess Championship in 2018. All right, let's go through this game. Starts with d4. Okay, I played d4 in this game. Knight f6, knight f3. He was trying to go for king's engine with uh, g6, g6, and then bishop g7. Right, so going for the king's engine. And I played bishop f4. Okay, now we are into the London system. Um, just a bit of an intro in in rapid and also blitz chess. Let's say in the world rapid in the world blitz, Magnus Carlsen likes to play the London system. So I was like, okay, in this game, uh, I'll, I, I'd rather try this one out. This was round number six, and uh, Burel had a perfect score of five here. I was on four and a half. Uh, I I drew my last round here, so I was like, okay, try the London and see what happens. So he went for bishop g7. I went for knight bg2. Castles. C3. Right to just to close this line from uh, the h8 to a1. D5. Okay, with with this structure, uh, with the pawn on d5. Actually, here also. After c3, black can go for d6, which is the king's Indian. But he went for d5. And now with d5, white has a complete control of the important e5 square with this pawn, bishop, and knight. So white has this central grip. h3 to prevent bishop g4. At the same time also a clearance for the bishop on h2 if in case black plays knight to h5. Black played c5. All right, now we have this central break with c5. Okay, in the game, I played that d takes c5. Okay, the reason why I played d takes c5 is that it's it's because we are playing a rapid game. If this was a classical game, I would have gone on to play the more solid e3 with the control of the middle pawn or the central pawn on d4. We have this central grip and this pawn on d4 also is taking away that e5 square if this was a classical game. And also I was, I was, look, I was looking at our position as well in the standings he had five out of five i want to catch him i was four and a half so i was like okay better go for d takes c5 try to muddy some things yeah and go for a fight so d takes c5 we'll see what happens he went for knight c6 i played e3 of course clearing the way for your bishop it's either on b5, bishop e2, and then castles. Q and for a5. Okay. This is the first critical position of the game when he played a5. After a5, I played bishop b5, which is not the best move in this position. Okay. What happened was he played knight to d7. I played knight to b3. He had this a4 move. After knight bd4, then he had a3. But looking back, 
after a5 i should have not allowed him to play this a4 move a4 should have been played here stopping a4 at the same time if the opponent moves back to d7 to hit my pawn on c5 i have this knight b3 and that begs the question for black which is can he gain back that pawn on c5 because right. so for example let's say he plays e5 i have bishop g3 and we are also hitting that pawn on d5 with our queen if he plays e4 we have knight fd4 right if he plays knight e5 only then we play bishop b5 and that extra pawn on c5 is a very big thing later in the game all right uh, sometimes uh, when we when we play rapid games or blitz games we try to use our instincts right uh, here i played a bit too fast not calculating the consequences he played knight d7 i played knight b3 a4 knight bd4 okay luckily for me he played a3 my worry was uh, this move knight takes e5 yes because if let's say i play maybe he was concerned about knight takes e6 but after this takes there's this bishop a6 yes although white has an extra pawn and you're hitting the rook on a8 the problem is this king on e1 you cannot castle when this piece this bishop is on the way right the basic rule in castling you cannot castle when a piece is along that way okay now if let's say i capture that rook on a8 he could put more pressure with some moves like a3 right this pawn is protecting c3 if i take on a3 he has bishop takes c3 and that's a very big headache for white and black is close to winning this game yes so that's why i i didn't like i didn't like bishop to b5 yeah i should have played um, a4 first right before bishop b5 a4 first um i i should have been aware of that danger in the position with a4 but things happen okay i was lucky when he played a4 i was like okay and no sorry when he played a3 because with a3 i had b4 now i have this grip from c3 to b4 from b4 to c5 now it's hard for black to play from here because e5 is not possible because now i have okay he actually played it but now i have bishop bishop takes c6 pawn takes c6 now if for example he takes my bishop on f4 i have bishop takes d7 and if bishop takes d7 i can go for takes on f4 rook e8 and then just king f1 yes two pawns up then white can just go for g3 and then king g2 strong knight on d4 look at this knight right it's not against the bishops but the control of the knight in the middle is just too much for black okay so after a3 when i had b4 i was like okay i'm maybe i'm very very close to winning this game okay he played e5 takes on c6 takes knight takes c6 he played queen e8 of course the bishop has to go back to g3 in the game he played bishop to b7 now i was also looking at this capture knight takes c5 if he captured this pawn on c5 i would play takes on c5 now if let's say bishop a6 trying to go for knight d3 i have pawn takes knight he captures my knight takes on g7 king takes d7 and then queen d4 check king g8 then i would go for knight e5 although black is still holding on to this game right queen to b queen to b5 then i would go for c4 i have to castle d takes c4 and castles yes. 
Uh, good night. But this is still playable. Black is still all right here. Rook d8, next. Black should be fine. Although there's a scary knight g4, knight h6 here for white. Because uh, there's no dark square bishop from h8 to a1. So that's his problem as well. Okay. When I played knight takes c6, he went for bishop b7. Now I have knight a5. Takes, takes. He played knight takes c5. Uh, after I castled, I felt very comfortable with the position now. And all I have to do is just re regroup and keep my advantage. Uh, I have this outside pass pawn. I'm up an exchange. Okay, the rest is just a matter of technique. I just have to be careful. He went for knight e4. I played bishop h2. I don't want to compromise my structure because he was planning to go knight h3 and I will have a double pawn and an isolated pawn, a3, c3, a5, and a2. Okay, just to keep the structure intact at the expense of the c3 pawn because if let's say he captures on c3, I would just go king b3. If knight e2, just king h1. All right, I think this will be too much also for black to handle. Now I have queen takes a3. I can go for rook to b1, rook f b1, rook to b6, so on and so forth. Okay, he played queen e6, queen b3, bishop to a6, rook fd1, okay, queen bishop c4, after bishop c4, I took on a3. Now in the game, he played rook, sorry, uh, sorry about that, he played rook a8. Now let's examine this move bishop e2. The bishop is hitting the rook on d1 and also the knight on f3. So if let's say I move my rook on e1, black has bishop takes f3. If I play g takes f3, then he has knight g5, right? But then if he plays bishop e2, I was ready for it. I would go for knight e2. Just to simplify the position because now I have this outside pass pawn. If let's say he plays bishop takes d1, I would go for knight a c4. Yes. Or I can even I can even go for rook takes d1 as well knight takes d2 takes d2 if he plays rook to b8 threatening mate on b1 just exchange right this outside pass pawn will cost him the game yeah. okay let's go back so queen takes a3 rook to a8 knight to d2 when you're up an exchange when you're up material all you have to do is simplify, yes. not allowing any counterplay. He went for bishop f8, queen b2, knight takes on d2, rook takes on d2. He captured an a5, queen to b8. The pin on the back rank, the pin on the bishop, hitting the pawn on e5 with this bishop also on h2. He was forced to play f6. And now rook on an open file, rook to b2. The rook wasn't doing anything on d2, put it on an open file, threatening rook b6. Or I can also go for queen d8, hitting the rook, and then rook b8 coming up. Yeah. He went for rook c5, rook to b6, another threat on the queen. He played queen c8. Now, if he keeps the pawn, for example, with queen f7, keeping this pawn on f6, I would go for a4 here, the outside pass pawn, right? Just go all the way, a4, a5, a6, a7. My king is safe, the rook is protecting my back rank. Pass pawn has be pushed. So queen c8 takes again, uh, when we're up material, just simplify. Takes another pawn. Bishop g7, rook on b6, controlling the open file so that he doesn't have any counterplay on the b file. He went for e4, push that pawn, okay, extra pawn. Captures on c3, threat on the bishop. Bishop d2, maintaining the pin on the c file, at the same time attacking the bishop. 
Again, bishop a5, what do we do? Let's drink to that first. When we're up material, exchange, yes. He takes on b8, bishop takes b8, limited now, no more rooks, no dangers. Bishop e5, centralizing the bishop on d4. Then for king d7, open file on b2, open b file. He played king c7, stopping rook to b7 to h7. Okay, f3, the pawn break. Capture, capture. He played h5, and now I have e4. d takes e4. This is the last mistake by black. And now I have this pin on c2. Pin on the bishop to the king, and here black resign. Because now white will be up at rook, and that's too much. Okay, now, before we end this video, let's just look at certain moments of the game here. Okay, let's discuss this first. Huh? This is the London system. C3. Okay, the decision for me to take on C5 is, is because of the nature of the tournament, which is a rapid tournament, or if, even if it's blitz tournament, uh, I would go for, okay, some, you know, fighting lines or whatever. Dobius, and D takes C5 is not the best in the position. But since it's rapid, the, the opponent doesn't have enough time to calculate concrete lines. So I went for it. Just to give pressure, okay, to justify his uh, sacrifice on C5. I was like, okay, let me just take, and we'll see what happens. Again, if this is a classical game, I'd rather go e3, keep it solid, right? An example would be, let's say, b6. Okay, b6, I would go bishop e2, bishop b7, this castles, knight bd7, a4, hitting the b6 pawn. And then if, let's say, a5, queen to b3, the backward pawn in b6 is going to be hit. I see three, then knight b1, maneuver to a3, and then b5. Okay. With the control of e5, an outpost on b5, white should be fine in this game. If this was a classical game, this would have been my plan. But since I was like, you know, I was also half, half a point behind with 4.5 out of 5, he had 5 out of 5, I was like, okay, let's just go to d takes e5. Not the best, but it gives pressure. Yep. Yeah, let's keep the pawn. Let's keep the pawn. It's an extra pawn. And if he makes a mistake, we'll go from there. Unfortunately, he actually made a mistake. If in this, because bishop b5 was also a mistake. If in this position, he, he went for knight takes e5, black could have been better. Could have been better. Let's say I castle. He has bishop d7. He has the control of two important central squares, d5 and e5. And it's hard for me also to organize a plan here. Because I don't have that pawn on d4. Yeah. And a3 is looming as well. So it, it, it's breaking my pawn structure on the queen side. But uh, on this day, some, some days, these grandmasters are pretty strong. But on some days also, we, we can catch them off guard. You know, on, we can catch them in their off days. And it was his off day. You know. So when he, when he played uh, A3, that is probably the, the, the biggest mistake in the game. Because when I played B4, I was very comfortable. That extra pawn gave me mm, that important win in round number six then i was leading the tournament up until the last round but <laughs> that will be another video for next time <laughs> right. so thank you for watching this game once again and uh, continue to follow us on 
Facebook, Charge Max Chess, and also on YouTube. We will have more of this content in the days to come. This is Coach Oliver. Stay safe, everyone, and signing off. Babushi.